introduce this panel. These guys are going to be looking at 2022, the year of the World Cup. Online sports betting will see significant growth this year due to the World Cup. And this panel discussion is looking at the implications and logistics for the industry. Henry, thank you very much indeed. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm Henry. I'm the founder and managing director of Consulenta, the, uh, the boutique consultancy agency with the other pronounced in the name, probably. Um, and uh, we are here to discuss the 2022 uh, 22 year of the World Cup. Uh, thank you for, uh, uh, for joining us. And uh, I would like uh, to start here to introduce uh, our panel today. Uh, we start uh, with uh, Anastasia. Uh, my name is Anastasia Kasatova. I'm Chief Commercial Officer at Richex. So we are a network that provides traffic for different offers, and Betting uh, uh, is one of our main offers that are out there right now. We work with Push, Pop, InPage uh, directly, and Alangar Traffic. And yeah, today I'm going to tell you about that. And we're going to can you go with, uh, with Chris? Good morning. Thanks everyone for being here. Uh, I represent Henry. I'm the head of the domestic department. We are a sports medic, uh, software provider. We work worldwide. So this is uh, actually the busiest week for us. Two days before the World Cup. We are uh, really looking forward to it. Very good. Can you go Hey guys, uh, pleasure to meet you all. So basically we are now doing consultancy business. Previously I was doing and I was launching sports books, uh, different international brands, doing this operational side of this business, risk management, and so on. So, uh, we'll be glad to have a few questions. Thank you. And uh, the Thomas. Yes, good morning. My name is Thomas Kadervala, uh, CEO of uh, Akish Core. We do sports predictions, uh, all the related to uh, the U.S. market, we work with our current company, Audis, that's the second biggest radio station owner in the U.S. Thank you. So, uh, on a personal basis, uh, I have experience in uh, handling operation in five World Cups, so the World Cup for me is, uh, has a special place in my heart, and uh, it's great to see the operational evolution that happened uh, during uh, during these last, uh, these last 20 years, and that might be something that uh, we would like to start with, and then we uh, uh, we can start immediately with uh, Thomas, because you are so very experienced in uh, in this industry. Can you please uh, get us through a bit uh, to uh, the evolution that happened with, uh, with the World Cup? Yeah, I think this year is of course very interesting due to the timing of the World Cup. Uh, usually during the summertime, uh, when we think about betting, there is um, only baseball and uh, Finnish football that is ongoing. The World Cup is played, but now it's uh, November, December, when we have all the major North American sports uh, still running. So our people going to bet more or less. I think that's a good question from both angles. And uh, if I think uh, those bettors who are, let's say, casual fans to follow their national football team, they are maybe increasing the volume a bit uh, as they are betting, but uh, otherwise, it's the uh, Interesting topic, and we'll see what kind of the volumes we get and out of the wins of World Cup. Do you think that there's a, that there's a possibility of uh, the turnover being cannibalized? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think some of the sports are, let's say, NBA, NFL, US, and people are getting those, and the World Cup is just the one other tournament for them, especially in the US market. Great, okay. Uh, Anastasia, um, uh, you were operative uh, in the last year, uh, your, uh, your organization. Can you tell us a bit about the differences that you have seen between four years ago and uh, this one? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. So in 2018, we were like a small company and we only started and uh, there were not so many people who know about advertising. The majority was launching all other formats. So basically, just before the World Cup, we had a few companies who were very companies who came to us and started advertising with our forums. And uh, since none of the people really knew what push is about, it was so clickable and it was 
and you brought such good results uh, the ROI was high and everyone was just starting to talk about this format because you know anything about the advertising it's really hard to use to be so because of different populations and you need to change your campaign constantly and she's not so tricky with that so it's really easy it's uh, really 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 cheap and uh, yeah the part is just cool I mean, uh, that's how I understood <clears throat> that this vertical team is one of our main verticals that we can really go for it and we can attract clients for it because we can really profit them. As I said, it's really cheap, it's really easy, there is no any limitations on how to launch your companies. And uh, since then, we've been working with different companies with affiliates program, uh, getting offers with different veteran companies. And uh, all of them are saying that up to 50% like, of the budget goes for the advertising and ops. They really make a push the direct thing that we work with. This is actually why we brought it because we knew that this is something that is popular for this specific audience. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a uh, quick easier, and uh, the team is not the only one vertical that we are working with. But what we see with the other verticals, it's more like stable. So we have this growth, but it's like overall, it's really predictable. And with Betty, uh, due to different events that are happening, uh, the popularity is always like scaling, then it's still dropping, and then it's scaling again. So with uh, these players, one of uh, it's, it's like a week left till the event will start. So we're seeing how advertisers are starting to launch like uh, twice as many companies. So they, it's like a, a really short period of time where you need to just spend all of your budget so you can bring as it's much as you can. Yeah, it's getting really, really, really hard. It's getting hard. Uh, yeah, and uh, you just know that like two weeks a week before you will get like twice or like three times more of the best margins that we do yeah. on the usual basis. And uh, for, the, for the last week of this event, that would just that would be just like coming on and that's what came to this conference because you know that there are lots of clients who can be our potential clients, especially before such an event and we can find someone and we can help you work with that, we can really bring you on. Alright. Oh, Chris. Thank you. Operations. Uh you are highly experienced in operations. What do you tell us about this work up? Your expectations, uh, where do you see it going, uh, especially from a uh, risk management uh, point of view? Sure. You know, first of all, I think uh, we need to make some assumptions. When you're talking about this particular World Cup, we need to make some assumptions. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> because we don't have similar experience. We don't have uh, any time. We've never had a World Cup uh, in this period of the year, yeah? And uh, traditionally, you know, sports fans uh, around the world have associated uh, the World Cup with summer months, European summer months. Uh, maybe it's a couple of years in the balcony, or I don't know how. So it's going to be a different situation. The time is different. On the same time, as uh, we already mentioned, um, there are major sport tournaments that are really happening as we speak, yeah? And uh, for sure, uh, this is going to direct uh, and cannibalize the jeopardize the traffic and the ticket. Everyone's expecting. Another uh, vertical is that, uh, you know, traditionally in sports betting, uh, October and November are very, very, very good months. Very strong months. Yes, very strong months. Uh, maybe the strongest uh, among the four years. So, you know, if we're talking about the World Cup happening in June, we typically estimate two to three times the turnover, but uh, this is two or three times the turnover of May. It's very hard to have two to three times in the of October or November during uh, this particular World Cup. Yeah. On the same time, there's been all this you know, discussion about Qatar, um, mm -hmm. human rights and so on. I don't want to insist on that, but uh, there's been some plain steps that uh, going on and I think we should mention. So it's a fact that a lot of organizations, a lot of funds, partially will boycott the World Cup, but I believe it will affect a little bit the business. Um, risk management wise, as you asked me, you know, in a uh, company like ours, uh, we don't wait for the World Cup uh, to implement our uh, risk management strategies. 
Okay. Uh, this was, uh, that would mean that uh, during uh, all the other time of the year we would be in a big, 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 big minus. So our risk management started in the policy and tools uh, after the operational, uh, our operational time. And, uh, during the World Cup, uh, we for sure want to make sure that uh, uh, we give an FTI. We're implementing some special processes, uh, our training teams, uh, 24 7 and all. We for sure expect a lot of traffic, but in reality, World Cup is not the time for uh, our users uh, to come in. In World Cup, we're expecting uh, a lot of recreational methods. Uh, yeah. The app users uh, have better times to come to the very good. Uh, well, um, what do you think about uh, how the time zones and uh, how the time zones will affect uh, the turnover in this world? Actually, uh, so this is a good question, and I was thinking a lot about the time zone is uh, actually good because all these games uh, they will be played the in Qatar, so it's basically 11, 10 o'clock, uh, which equals to. 7, 8 o'clock uh, in Europe, so basically no effect here. But uh, for our uh, office, Asian countries, uh, they don't watch it as they will usually watch it in uh, previous times. Uh, as for United States, in Latin it is even better because in the United States, uh, they will continue to place the bets on uh, their regular events, so on the FDA regulation, NFI regulation. And uh, even one more big command is that it will be Austria. Yes, so, uh, yes, most of the globe, as well as uh, like Brazil and all these countries, because uh, it's uh, early morning in Brazil that uh, they are okay, they are living in this reality for a long time, they are watching all these demands, Russia, uh, all these European uh, clubs, so they are totally okay, so uh, basically it's very good. All the countries money. We'd like to hear from you a bit also from a uh, thought perspective. How would such an event as huge as the World Cup uh, uh, and the thought is handling in a such a way it's a different way than uh, the normal operations for what they are used to do? Like, uh, in general, uh, this is business as usual, but uh, with uh, some assumptions. Again, uh, yes, because uh, you have to allow the player to place uh, the bed, which is which can be like uh, three times bigger than average bed, which is placed before. Uh, so the limits uh, has to be increased as, uh, uh, like, on the highest level, but at the same time, have all these uh, chippers who are playing on the stats, on the corners, uh, on uh, the red cards, and uh, they all are going to abuse as possible, especially in the first uh, game. So, drop stage and uh, everything which is happening uh, until the uh, quarterfinals will be challenging for risk management because we cannot cut all this player. It will be a lot of sharp players, but uh, as Chris said, uh, like the most part of players are occasional. So, we have to be focused on small markets uh, in terms of risk management. But all other markets, like one is two, like hotels, uh, handicaps, are uh, working well. So uh, risk management like brings uh, less impact than usual operation in this market. But in general, yeah, like small markets, that's uh, this challenge every time both up. Okay. So we have two minutes left, which I would like to pass for 30 seconds of each of our panel, telling us what they expect uh, to learn. Or what they expect to take home from this World Cup? 30 seconds for, for each one, whoever wants to start. Maybe start with, uh, with the predictions. Predictions, uh, that's fine. Who is going to win, but uh, uh, how we see that uh, down the top uh, eight of 10 teams are very, very equal, so we are expecting that um, there might be, of course, a surprises in the World Cup, like there is always, but um, still Brazil is going to win against France in the final. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, we're just expecting a new case to be open, we see how Brazil is going just to fall into the American region, and uh, uh, we expect for uh, the everything traffic to really approach in this tournament, 
uh, how it goes. Uh, I believe that that would be the modest two months of the year for us. Okay. Chris? As a bookmaker, I would like uh, the outside of the week. <laughs> As a fan, I would like to support Brazil. But uh, in this case, uh, we are exposed to a lot in Brazil. We have a lot of traffic from there. So let us know Brazil won't be. Don't take it wrong. <laughs> Always support you more. <laughs> Always. Yeah, I think I'm increasing the volumes of everything, like employers, the uh, revenue, and uh, I hope that uh, the final thing will be uh, not so predictable with less time, because uh, less time will stay plus plus money on a few less runs. So hopefully this year will be more interesting. That's great. We're on time. I want to thank uh, everybody for uh, giving us the time to, uh, to discuss this very interesting subject. And uh, I'll hope to see you around. Thank you very much. Thanks especially to our friends and Sigma for, uh, for